Hi guys and welcome to the Under the Covers channel. I am Suzanne. I'm here today to talk to you about Kristen Ashley. So Kristen Ashley is a massive name in the romance genre. She's one of the few authors where you can say her initials and people will know who you're talking about. I can just start talking about K.A. to most romance readers and they will know that I am talking about Kristen Ashley without any other context and that is amazing. She kind of burst into the scene um, a few years ago and to be honest I don't think romance has ever been quite the same ever since. There are quite a lot of authors who write in a similar style to her but she is definitely but she is definitely unique. Um, so I'm going to talk about a few kind of characteristics of a Kristen Ashley book um, and then I really want to kind of go through the series and like talk about the best ones to start with, some of the series that I've really enjoyed and some of the best books that I think she's um, written and I also want to talk about the books that haven't worked for me and the series that haven't worked for me and then why. Um, I felt like this might be needed because Kristen Ashley is like Marmite, people love her or hate her, Marmite for those in the US. See how prepared I am, I had Marmite very prepared for you guys. Anyway, it's like a condiment slash spread. People love it, they hate it, I love it. And that is Kristen Ashley. Some people really like her, some people really, really do not. Um, and as a moderate, someone with like a moderate view on Kristen Ashley, I, I neither worship at her feet nor dislike her. Um, I have the books that I like and I have the books that I don't and I have the series that I like and the series that I don't. But I thought it would be a great, um, a great idea to kind of talk about her and the series that she's done and then recommend great places to start and really not great places to start. Um, and then you guys can tell me what you think, uh, what Kristen Ashley books you love, do you love her, do you hate her, um, let me know. So first of all, some characteristics of a Kristen Ashley book. So the big one that people know is are her heroes, her alpha heroes. I'm not going to say that every single male character that she's ever written is exactly the same person with a different name and a different hair colour, but an argument can be made for that. She writes very alpha heroes, um, they all do have their individual things, but what you remember about all her heroes are how kind of alpha they are, slightly overbearing, they don't like personal pronouns, they are very alpha, over the top, the kind of person that if they were real you would have to punch them in the face because they were so annoying, but yet somehow works really well in a romance novel. So that is the characteristics of a um, Kristen Ashley hero and I realised that sounded so negative but believe me I, I am plenty obsessed with a lot of Kristen Ashley's heroes, I really do love them. Um, but like I said, if they were real people, I'm not sure that I could be in the same room with them. Um, so if you like an alpha hero, then they are definite, this is definitely the kind of book that you will want to read. Um, her heroines um, and her heroes actually, they're all slightly older. So most of her heroes tend to be in, I don't know, between their 30s and in their 40s. And I love having a more mature heroine. As somebody who is over 30, I do enjoy seeing romances where the heroine is also over 30. Um, and you will find this in most of her books. Most of her heroines are in their 30s and 40s and I really love it. They've got a different life experience to those um, heroines that are in their 20s and it really shows. Um, and to me, it just makes the heroines more relatable. Um, so if you do want to read some books where the heroine is slightly older than what you perhaps may find in normal um, contemporary romance, um, then again, Kristen Ashley is an author that you might consider reading. So, and another point about Kristen Ashley's books um, is the length. They tend to be very long books. Um, I think, I mean, I don't normally read paperbacks, so I normally have them on as an ebook but I think they push 500 pages on average I'm not quite sure but it, they're longer than the usual 300 to 350 page romance novel so you do get a lot for your money with a Kristen Ashley novel and the reason that it is so long is because she 
is great. She likes the details. She likes um, to describe to you, I don't know, the room that they're in. So the heroines or heroes like decor. She does go into that. She really likes to set the scene for you. Um, and the same with people's like clothes and what they look like, what they're wearing. She really kind of likes to go go into those details, which does lengthen the book. It also slows down the pace of the book. So if you like a book which is kind of mostly about the characters uh, and them getting together um, and it doesn't have any kind of other story to that and so you don't mind that it's a slightly slower pace due to all the details that Kristen Ashley likes to put in there then again this is a book for you. I'm not saying it's a good thing, I'm not saying it's a bad thing, I think it depends on A um, what you prefer to read and also sometimes just what mood you're in. If you want something fast paced then you won't pick this up but if you're in the mood um, to have something which is a bit slower where you get to know the characters quite well, um, you get to know the surroundings quite well, um, then this, her books are the ones that you want to pick up when you're in the, kind of that kind of mood. So those are kind of the main characteristics that I've picked up from a Kristen Ashley book. Um, so now let's talk about the series that she's written. I am not going to talk about every single series, I will list them in a minute so you can see just how big her uh, body of work is. I am going to talk about the series I think is good for a beginner who has never read Kristen Ashley. I'm also going to talk about the uh, series or books that I think are really bad to start with if you haven't read Kristen Ashley before. And then I want to talk about the series that have really worked for me with Kristen Ashley and the series that really haven't worked for me for Kristen Ashley because I do want this to be like a really balanced view of Kristen Ashley books rather than uh, being either overwhelmingly positive or overwhelmingly negative. So I actually will never remember all the series off the top of my head so I have got my tablet here um, so that I can kind of read them off to you so sorry if I'm not looking directly at you. So let's go. So there's the Rock Chick series, there's the Colorado Mountain series, there's the Dream Man series, the Chaos series, the Unfinished Heroes series, the Berg, Fantasyland, Magdalene, The Three, Ghosts and Reincarnation, Heaven and Hell, which is actually a standalone, Moonlight and Motor Oil and The Honey series. And then there are some standalones, I believe, that are in there as well. So let's start off with the series that I think is an absolutely fantastic place to start and that is the Colorado Mountain series. I really love this book, these books. They've got a small town feel, so they're quite cute. They've a very small suspense plot. And when I say small, I mean small. These are not romantic suspense. These are contemporary romances. So my favourite book, and this is actually one of my favourite all-time Kristen Ashley books, is Sweet Dreams. And this is book number two in the Colorado Mountain series. And it is so, so good. Um, like I said, these books are long. How many pages is this? 676. So you're in for the long haul with these. But the Colorado, Colorado Mountain series is really good. If you want something really sweet that's got a small town setting, that does have a small suspense plot, but you know, don't get too work, don't get too into that. Um, but I just really like them. These are some of her earlier books, so they're not quite as polished as some of her later arrivals but they kind of do have her, this sounds a little bit gross, but they do have a lot of her natural essence in them. Um, whereas her later books, as I said, they're much more polished than um, this, especially the beginning of this series. But I do kind of like that raw Kristen Ashley style before she got smoothed it over. Um, so those are a great place to start. So now I need to tell you where you must not start. Do not start with the Dream Man series, and especially do not start with Mystery Man. No matter what you do, do not start with Mystery Man. It is a little bit insane, uh, Mystery Man, I think. So let me talk about the premise of Mystery Man, and then you may understand why I think it's a really, really bad place to start. So our heroine met our hero in a bar, and no judgment, no, there's no judgment from me. Um, without finding out his name or anything, they just kind of lock eyes across the room. He leaves, she's with her friend, but then she leaves later and bumps into him and they end up going back to her place and sleeping together. Fine, you know, he's gorgeous, uh, so she. 
The weird bit is, is that he comes to her house, I can't remember what day it is or weeks, let's just say Wednesdays, every Wednesdays he breaks into her house, they never exchange a word and they have sex. And then he leaves without them ever having a conversation, they still don't know each other's names, until something happens which then brings them together so they actually have a conversation. It's insane, it's insane! No matter how good looking or how good in bed someone is, if they broke into my house every week expecting to have sex with me, I would maybe say something. But like, it's just insane. Uh, it could only happen in contemporary romance. Um, so do, n do not start with Mystery Man. Do not start with Mystery Man. Her books are a little crazy sometimes, but in a fantastic way. But this one is just crazy in a crazy way. So do not start with Mystery Man until you hardcore love Kristen Ashley and you can kind of see past the very, very strange beginning of the Mystery Man, of the Mystery Man book. So that is my advice. So start with the Colorado Mountain series or another series that I really love, which has a a stronger romantic suspense element um, is The Berg. I really, really love The Berg. It's a fantastic series. Again, it's one of her earlier series as well. So like I said, it's uh, not quite as polished and smooth as her more recent releases, but I really, really love The Berg. It has got um, some fantastic books in there. Um, so I would recommend to start with that one as well. Um, another book, series that I want to talk about of hers is The Rock Chicks. These books are, they're, they're a ride these books. Um, I'm trying to describe them. So they're a really great example of books which showcase female friendship but they also showcase really well male friendship as well. Um, they are completely crazy, they are wacky, they are completely ridiculous but they are so charming, they're full of some really larger than life characters um, and I just can't get enough of them if I'm honest. I know that they're slightly ridiculous but I also absolutely adore it. Um, the Rock Chick it series is also one of my favourites um, and I highly recommend you reading those. Maybe not as the first books that you read by her but they're definitely worth a try. Like I said, I love books that talk about a female friendship and these books just they just do it really well, as well as the romance, which is obviously pure Kristen Ashley, alpha hero, kind of kooky, crazy um, heroine, like slamming together into each other's lives. Um, but this series does it really well with the action, like the extra element of those friendships and they and groups entwining, um, a found family. It's just absolutely fantastic. I really do love the Rock Chick series. Um, again, I think it's probably one of her more popular series and there's a reason for that because it is so very good. I really enjoy the Rock Chick series so give that a try. So now I want to talk about the series that have not won me over from Kristen Ashley. These are the series that, if I'm honest, I do not like. Um, oh, I feel bad saying that because I don't want to get any hate because I know how the depth of how much people love Chris and Ashley. First of all, I want to talk about the Unfinished Hero series, which is actually more of a mixed bag for me. There are some books in that series that I really liked, and one of them is Night, which is the first book, which really surprised me, um, because I'm not into erotic romance, if I'm honest, so that's probably another reason why I didn't enjoy them so much. I'm not that into erotic romance. Um, I'm not into any, like, the taboo, going on to the taboo, or, like, darker stuff either. Um, and this is Kristen Ashley exploring kind of erotic romance and taboos. And I just didn't enjoy that um, series particularly. I preferred her, I prefer her, I guess, to stay on the sweet side of romance. Um, so yeah, so her erotic romance series, um, Unfinished Heroes, didn't work for me, which did mean that I didn't read her Honey series, which is an erotic romance series. So I can't really speak about whether or not I like them or not because I chose not to read them because I just, not, I'm not a lover of, of erotic romance regardless of author so I didn't read it but um, Unfinished Heroes, I did like some of them but it was a bit mixed for me so it didn't, I, it didn't quite work as much as some of her other series have. So now another series which I didn't like, I have read all of them but I didn't like, I didn't like any of them 
I read them all because it's Kristen Ashley and I do try to read all of her books but I didn't I just didn't like them didn't work for me and that is the three the series is called the three and um, it's her venturing into paranormal romance um, and it just I don't know what it was um, the story didn't work for me the characters didn't work for me I just didn't like it um, I'm trying to it's hard to pin down because in some ways the the book was not that different from her contemporary romances but the paranormal like twist she did on it didn't work for me like at all I I didn't like them enough said about that I won't go too far into it they just weren't for me I didn't I didn't like them and I wouldn't recommend anyone starting reading with the three series by Kristen Ashley the other series that kind of did and didn't work for me is her fantastical series which is her adventuring into fantasy romance I think I'm beginning to see a pattern here that I basically like her sweet contemporary romances and I'm not a fan of her moving out of that genre but I'll carry on so her fantastical series there are some books in it I did enjoy and there is one book that I did enjoy that I but I won't read again um, and that's Golden Dynasty warning um, on this one the hero rapes the heroine at the beginning of the book I have very mixed feelings about this because I did end up liking the hero at the end and it was like the rape was it was horror I found it very difficult and I'm actually surprised that I continued reading and I do think that perhaps the rape wasn't dealt with very well oh not not very well but I felt like it was maybe just smoothed over too easily either way this this series kind of didn't didn't work for me some of the books are okay and I like them but some of them I haven't liked and although I did I did like Golden Dynasty it troubles me at the same time it troubles me I can't remember what year it was written in but it was a while ago so it wasn't written with today's lens and I you must bear that in mind sometimes when you're reading a contemporary like an older romance book but the fantastical series for me was sometimes problematic in uh, in, a, in a different in different ways depending on what book it was I found them problematic um I wouldn't say don't read them I don't think they're the best example of fantasy romance but they're okay like I said, um, just um, read a warning on Golden Dynasty. Rape does happen and it is committed by the hero and there are other troubling scenes which the heroine witnesses rather than it being done to her. It's just like, it's just a troubling book. I mean, I do like the books that make you think, but I don't, I just don't know if Kristen actually dealt with it as well as I would have liked it to be. Um, it wasn't a deep emotional look into things. It was, it was a romance where everything was fine by the end. And I'm not sure that worked for me. Anyway, so they were the series that, if I'm honest, not the best. I didn't really enjoy them. However, that is a relatively small amount of books within her whole kind of um, body of work that I haven't enjoyed. The others, I, I, I've, I've enjoyed. My, every Kristen Ashley book, to a degree, I have enjoyed. There are just some that I like a lot more than others. I am aware of the flaws in her writing um, and the way that she constructs her story. They are long. They do go into too much detail. The heroes are, are very... I'm trying to put this diplomatically. Her heroes are can be problematic. They can be too much I suppose um, but they are pure wish fulfillment they are pure fantasy and for those reasons they are great they are great escapism and they bring me a lot of joy uh, when I read it I know they're not for everyone but they do bring me joy um, and I hope this was a balanced look at Kristen Ashley kind of her strengths her weaknesses the kind of highlights of her writing career um, the fact that she does write older heroes and older heroines she writes single parents both single fathers and single mothers um, and I just and she writes friendship as well I don't I know I spoke about the rock chick series but she does write female friendship and male friendship really really well as well and that is something I do really enjoy in a book is when it shows that the heroine and he the hero and heroine do not live in a bubble together they have friends they have family and everyone's kind of in their life and it is great to see that depicted in a romance book um so yeah so I hope that was a more moderate view a more balanced view of Kristen Ashley's books and I hope it like encourages you if you haven't to at least give one a try it is certainly an experience that if you like romance is 
is worth doing and worth seeing what everyone's talking about. There are a lot of people who try to imitate Kristen Ashley to relative success or not, um, but there is only one Kristen Ashley and you always know when you're picking up one of her books. She has, like I said, she, I think since she's came along the romance genre has changed, whether it's for the better or not, that's up to you to decide. But I hope you've enjoyed that video. Do not forget to like and subscribe and I'm gonna see you in the next video. Hi guys, welcome to the end of this tunnel, uh, under the tunnel channel. Our new channel about tunnels. And this is Marmite guys, in case you haven't seen it. And I have just knocked all my books on the floor. Um, let's pick this back up. Oh, fuck it now. Let's start this again. Yeah,